All right, today I've got my cleaning crew ready to go because we are tidying up the quarters because this week we've got some of the lads from Wongatha coming up. So the Aboriginal trainees to get a bit of their station time in and we're going to be tackling a couple of jobs. So it's really good to have those guys up here. But one of the main things is that we want to make sure that they are comfortable and they've got nice clean rooms to sleep in. And we're just going to make our way through the quarters. So yeah, enjoy that. Happy? Yeah, you're just dragging it straight to that line there. Now we are using this one and that one, so don't get it too much on the wool glue. Okay, if you push him right in, he doesn't shake so much. Okay, so you gotta aim for that one. Look, look down there, look down the bottom. Okay, where you go. Right. Too easy. So you want to be around about here, and that's the noise you want. So get in there and don't be afraid. Hold the trigger down for just a little bit longer when you're on this little join here. Yeah. But you can already see that you've gone from here to here and you've gotten better as you've come along. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're doing well. So, so just hold it down a little more in this point. Yeah, so come in a bit more on an angle like here. And then you're just pulling it across little little width. Time lapse. 
Nah, we're working that quick, you don't need time, mate. Yeah. yeah. Hey, did you know you can actually buy new lenses for your welding helmets? Yeah, they're in the fridge set. The fridge is woven. <laughs> you're, you're pretty close there, Tom. That's not welding my braille. Uh, do you want to do this one? Yeah. Right. So, what I want you to do is, your left hand is aimed. Yep. Right. Um, okay, so I get myself nice and comfortable like this. Yep. And then make sure I can get in. Now I'm attacking the well at an angle like that. Right, so into that, into that thing well there. And I'm pulling the trigger and I'm pausing. One, two, nearly three, and then I'm going to start moving. Now, because I'm not going for a deep, really strong penetrating well for this, I'm doing little few stacks as I go along. Yeah. So it's one, two, three, I'm moving yeah. along like this, holding the trigger firmly the whole time. And what you can see is you're looking for the pull of metal to be sucking into your other yeah. Okay, it's not it's not real easy to see doing this, but um yeah, so focus more on your pull than the start than the right way. So, one, two, moving. Now, I want you to get yourself comfortable, and I want you to not pull the trigger. I want you to do, pop yourself up, and do a, a dry run. So, don't pull the trigger. Yeah, you want to No, 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 film it up. You're watching. Now, you're left-handed, you'll come around that side, which is fine. So, as long as you're comfy, and then, and then you don't. But pull the trigger with it in here, and it's one, two, and what you're looking for, you'll get it to burn into this angle on piece of pit. It's this flat bit that it's harder to get the world to suck into. So, it, uh, yeah, if you want to, um, and just, yep, right, you need to talk you where you want to be. And remember, if into the, into, put into the food like that, right? And pull the trigger, one, two, then start moving forward. Oh. And just real big jags as you go along, or half the room if you want, yep. uh, as you go along, pushing that one, and then stop and get the end. Yep. I'll be watching, I'll yell out at you. Yep. So get your belt and pull the trigger. Now start, now slowly, slowly. I'm going to let go now and you're going to start again. Don't forget to pull it back down into this bottom field. Yep. Okay, go for it. Nozzle closer. Slower, slower. Yep. And yep. Now yeah, that'll do. Let's see here, yeah. once your eyes adjust the back. Um, I'm just going to put pull this out to get a bit of a yep. pointy stick. Right. See here? This is where I've stepped in and gone. Pull it back down into this steel. Oh, yeah. Because you just, you have to see how it just really hasn't stuck into it at all. Oh, yeah. You've laid it all. It's so easy to burn it into this stuff here because it's you're on the side of it. But punching through that flat face, that's what you've got to do. And that's why I'm going to slow down. Whoops. Get back into it and turn it into there. Yep. All right. So I'll weld this one, then I'll spot them, and you'll weld the two inside welds. Oh, yeah.
So Ant and I have just pulled up to check our load, make sure we've still got two tanks and a couple of troughs. It's good, Jack, because I, I've only got one uh, rear view mirror and I can only see one tank. So I'm really happy to see that there's still two tanks. I'd hope to that you see the tumbly tumbly off the side. So I'm just going to go check this trough that Ant strapped down. Yes. Make sure it's still there. Yes. Still got all my tyres, so that's always a good thing. So we're about halfway to where we're going for today. And we've got a couple of creeks up here. So... I love creeks. Yeah. Ant's done this road before, but it's sort of a memory check. Yeah. 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 So we've got Leary's first up, which is a bit of a dip. Then after Leary's, there's another dip yeah. on the hill. Yeah. And then there's a right-hand turn that's going to be a little bit interesting. And hopefully we find where this drill rig's gone. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting the driller. Yeah. I wonder if he's got all of his hands. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, I'm ready. Paco's ready. just lifting off at the start of this crest so I don't go in too hot. Right. down to about 30 coming into this. This next creek is worth slowing down a bit for. Here we are at uh, Windida Station, which is the indigenous station next door to Prenti. And uh, Jack's been tasked with finding some water holes. Well, we've been we've been given the areas. Yeah. 
and the guys have had a look. Now we're having a, another look ourselves. Yep. And the goal is to have good fresh water here so we can set a yard up. Yep. And it's actually not a bad spot to muster to, but the idea is to put self-mustering yards here. Right. Okay. So, Jack, he's going to show us the ancient art of water divining. Dividing or divining? Divining. Water divining. Okay. Yeah. Watch this. All right, Jack, over to you. <laughs> Theory first. Well, I can't explain the theory. It's, okay, it's, no it's theory. mystic. It's magic. Okay, okay then don't get yeah. away. So, Tell us what we're looking for. Well, some people use an old branch, old stick or anything. I like to use like wire off a good windmill. Yep. But we're using fencing wire today. And you, you want to hold it so you can't manipulate it. Like I can't clench or anything and that's not moving. And so then you've picked up your area, looked at your country, seen that you don't have any of the shrubs that, you know, are going to say salt. And we've got a good creek line there with nice big gums on it. And they're not going to be in the salt. Okay. So we're looking for picking up something coming off this ridge line. And so it's as much about reading the country as, you know, having it talk to you. But as you work in an area... This bit of wire here. That's, that's, that's the answer. Okay, righty -o. come on then. You cruise along and you'll get movement. Whoa, you're not moving that, Jack. N no, Ant. Yeah. Wow. So then you, you just give a kick on the ground. It's pointing me that way, so I'll go for a walk in that direction. It's kicked me back. So okay. we mark it down. We're just getting closer and closer to where we need to target. And we're getting sort of like a consistent result here. So we'd already done this area. And so once you've sort of worked the area and you go across on an angle, marking it up, you get your target zone, you keep getting smaller and smaller. And you're looking for that, that change. And so then we go over to our two bits of wire. Oh, two bits. And that's to give us our idea for our there she got two bits of wire yeah okay come on then and then as we're going along if they cross over we're at fresh that's fresh water if they cross over like that yeah okay what happens if they don't cross over if they go the other way like out sideways yeah you're looking more at salt okay so you're saying this is the spot well where you're standing is the spot that took me a few minutes to walk over and pick and pick and right on that spot just crossing over so this is our spot and then other people some people talk about the depth to it and so our stream is this way yep and so that's the stream we're on the x and so what we do is we go for a walk out nine meters to moisture and that 20 paces so we're actually only looking at um like 15 meters so within four rods we should should hit some water and then oh so that that what you just stepped out then yeah you're saying okay that'll be the depth of where you think you'll get to water yeah so okay. two two rods will hit moisture and after four How rods we'll be rod? we're uh, with three meter rods on this one Okay, so, you, so so come on, give us your give us your prediction. And all right, so nine paces. So my paces aren't. You can't walk. You can't walk underground, Jack. If we dig a big enough hole, we can. Well, you could, but we're not. No. Right. Yep. So, so nine paces, which yes. mine is what um, three of my paces to well two point six of my paces to a yard. No, that, Jack, that's not right. You must have, what have you got, pygmy? I'm doing little paces. You must have pygmy. We're, we're doing precision here. Are we drilling this fucking hole or what? Yeah. All right, so we're out on site and they've hit water. Started down at 22 metres, bit of sniff at 15, fracture at 28, and then a good supply down in 
find the depth, the depth around 38 meters. Morning, Jack. Morning, Ant. We are we are rolling in every way. We are on our way to, back to Windida. Yeah. Day three of operations. Yeah. Yeah, day three. Day three. So just give us a bit of background on This is the Windida job. And the Windida job is to establish or repair eight water points at Windida yep. to increase the productivity. Okay. And it's bringing them up to the same standard as we have at Prenti, just with the exception of the remote monitoring. Yep. And the reason we don't have the remote monitoring isn't because of a lack of desire, it's because of a lack of funding. Right. Yeah, we so, can't. Yeah. So Windida is the indigenous station next door. Yep. Yep. At the eight water points funded under the NIAA, which is the National Indigenous Australians Agency. Okay. So it's effectively a, um, that's a funding source for Aboriginal corporations. So why it, it's sort of needed is a property like this, Windida, is a cattle station, but they can't approach the bank for funding like we can. Why not? because of the land tenure. So if I don't pay the bank, uh, the bank takes the station off me. Yep. They can't take the station off uh, the Aboriginal I see. Corporation. I see, because it's a different, you've got a leasehold. Yep. And their land is a, what? Well, technically it's a Aboriginally, Aboriginal pastoral station. Okay. Which means it's, the same as a parcel station, but they've got the native title over it as well. Okay. So if the station gets taken, yeah, it's complicated. Someone else will know more about it than I do, so I'd be unqualified to... Okay, that, that's fine. All right, Jeff, we're doing eight water point self-mustering system. We've just been strong advocates for it in this landscape to use that self-mustering methodology and using the solar supply for the water okay so can you explain what does self-mustering mean so the self-mustering is that to muster or to collect your livestock they do it themselves using their own energy the cow's own energy yes the cow's own energy rather than our energy to uh, you know, ground them up to secure them to capture them whatever word you want to use for it Okay, so let's say now I want to take, let's say we're doing mustering under your system. How, how do you do it? Shut the gate. Ah. But then they can't get in. No, you shut the out gate. Ah. So you have, and we'll show everyone, I think you might have shown it before, we'll show it again. The out gate is where the forcing pen. Yes, and so when you're processing cattle, they naturally will walk to where the processing occurs. Okay. Because that's part of their normal pattern. Oh, I see. So they want to leave the yard, they go to walk out of the yard, and you're not actually putting pressure on them, you're just allowing them to go through. Their natural path. Yep. A lot less energy expended, a lot less stress on the animal, a lot less stress on us and our ageing knees. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ageing knees, Jack. Because this is an opportunity for people to learn and so forth, you have a sort of ongoing training and development model down at your brain farm in Esperance. So could you just explain that? So down at Clare Downs, which is just out of Esperance, 120 k's, my brother Tom has started running a few trainees. 
also guys who are going through TAFE and doing their certificates in agricultural studies. Yep. And what that gives them is on the job experience whilst they're learning book work, a lot of it, and we've been applying the same principle, learn how to do it and then learn the theory. Yep. Because then it all pull together. The way our brains work, it's better to know the job then find out why. Yeah. Yeah, because um, you can relate. You yes. can relate, whereas if you do the theory first, you've got no context. Yeah, it's a lot of information without context. Yep. Which yep. is a bit of a flawed model. It's kind of like walking out of university and expecting to get a top paid job. You yep. don't deserve it. You're an apprentice when you finish your degree. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Look at doctors. Yep. You don't go out of four years of uni and suddenly get start chopping people open. No, no, well, no. Specifically, the model that you have down there is with, with who? With um, Wonga the Caps. Wonga the Caps. Which is no uh, Christian. Christian. Aboriginal parents schools. Christian Aboriginal parent schools. Okay, and one of those is called Wonga the, which is near your farm down in Esperance. Yes. So, Tom, your brother, he's working with some of the Indigenous boys from there and girls. Yeah. They come and, um, you know, get that hands-on experience on the grain side. And the cattle, because we've got cattle down there as well. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Three of the boys. Danny, he's an alumni from the school. Okay. And so he came and worked with us full-time okay. after finishing school. Right, and then the other three lads, they do uh, up to three days a week out at the farm and get the experience in the grain, the cattle, all those operations that happen down there. And now they've been able to come up to the station to do some of the station work. And because we had rain recently, we're not doing cattle work, but we've got this job over here at Wingdida, where the guys can see how to set up a water point in this model. Because at Prenti, we're not setting many up yeah. because we've done it all. Yeah. And yeah. we're still slowly growing, but you don't get the opportunity to see the whole system. But also, when you're learning to do something, doing it once doesn't lock it in. No. And no. We've been seeing with the guys, like doing the pipe fittings. Yeah. 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 I 100% agree. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And what we don't capture a lot on the camera is how much crap the boys give air. <laughs> yeah. They, they've recognised that I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> and so... I, I, uh, I, I am the uh, target of much comic release. I'm happy to oblige. It's a good fair playing field. It's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, around the, it's getting dressed for the occasion. You sort of need the yards in the back to say it is a cattle yard though, no? But do you need cattle to say it's a cattle yard? I'll tell you what, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> We're going to go to the front of the gate and then when we do the, the, the selfie, like... you can see through the gate, the trough and this and that. <laughs> Happy? Good. All right, yeah. let's go. Even happier than Jack filmed that. <laughs> <laughs>